Puritans quickly learned that wheat, it was hard to grow in the New World, so they developed a bread that included rye. That grew well, and the bread also included corn. Now, it was called Rye Indian, and by the 1800s, the bread included molasses, it was steamed, and the name was changed to brown bread. Today, you can find canned brown bread at the supermarket, and it's ready for you to steam at home, but Keith is here to show us a from-scratch version that is just so much better. So I grew up eating those supermarket brown breads, and they're okay, but today we're gonna make a dark, moist, complexly flavored loaf that will blow those out of the water. Excellent. We started recipe development for this recipe looking at probably one of the most popular brown bread recipes, which was written by Fanny Farmer mm -hmm. some years ago. And she started out with a trio of flours. The first flour that she used was a rye meal, so a coarsely ground rye berries. Today, we don't have that rye meal. We have rye flour, mm -hmm. which is what we're using here. We have three quarters of a cup of rye flour, and that's gonna add a nice earthy, almost spicy under flavor to the brown bread. It's really delicious. She used graham flour. Again, it's wheat flour, but it's more coarsely ground. Today, with our milling processes, it's much finer, and so this is just three quarters cup of whole wheat flour. And we have three quarters of a cup of white cornmeal here. Again, it's finer. It's not as coarse as the ones that Fanny used. Mm -hmm. And that's going to allow us to reduce our baking times. So we're using one and three quarters teaspoon of baking soda. That's what's going to give the brown bread its lift when we're baking it. But Fanny only used baking soda in her recipe. We made a slight improvement. We're going to add a little bit of baking powder. It's a half teaspoon. And what that's going to do is going to give it a lighter texture because the soda is going to act right away when we mix the acidic ingredients in it. It's going to leaven that. The baking powder is going to leaven it throughout the baking process, so it's going to give it a lighter area texture in the end. And I also have one teaspoon of salt here. So I'm just going to whisk this together. Okay, so our dry ingredients are all set. Now we're going to work on the wet ingredients. Okay. Fanny Farmer and most of the recipes out there use buttermilk as the base. I have one and two thirds cup of buttermilk. We really like the tang that it added and also the acidity is gonna react with that baking soda and leaven the bread. To that, we're gonna add a half a cup of molasses. And we're also gonna add three tablespoons of butter to this. Fanny's recipe didn't call for any butter, but she was probably using uh, buttermilk that had more fat in mm -hmm. it. And that butter is gonna give the brown bread some richness. Now we're just gonna whisk this together. We're gonna work that molasses into the buttermilk. Now that we've got that whisked together, I'm gonna put some raisins in here. I have three quarters cup no, of raisins. <laughs> I know. We don't have to put them in there, but I like the little bits of sweetness that you get. We have three quarters of a cup. I'm trusting you. You'll like it, believe me. <laughs> stir those in there. And now we can stir our wet into our dry until there's no streaks of flour remaining. And that's I can all. smell it. It smells so good, that molasses. And actually, you can get a little whiff of the rye, too. It's very Boston brown bread, that rye. You can already see the baking soda start to react with those acidic ingredients and start to make bubbles and leaven that bread. So now for the fun part, the baking. Hundreds of years ago, they were using tin pudding molds to bake this. More recent recipes used one pound coffee tins to bake it, but we couldn't find either one of those. So we're using something that we have in the test kitchen all the time, 28 ounce cans of tomatoes or beans. They work perfect for this recipe. We just had to scale it down a little bit. If you're worried about safety, about BPA cans, most of the labels will say BPA free cans, so mm -hmm. you can use those. We're just gonna spray the insides of this with vegetable oil spray to make sure that the batter doesn't stick to it. Now I'm gonna portion it into these cups. I like to use a scoop for this. This way you can kind of divide it evenly. Yeah. Okay, one last scoop for this can here. I'm just gonna take a rubber spatula and smooth the top of this down. Now we just can't steam these without a lid, so we're gonna use a little bit of aluminum foil here. I'm just gonna spray a little center in here, so in case the batter comes up, it doesn't stick to the foil. Very smart. So I like to push it down a little bit, and then I like to gather the long edges and kind of pull them towards me and smush them around the can. You wanna make sure that there's a pretty good seal there so any water that's gonna boil up is not gonna get underneath that foil and get into the brown bread batter. And I'm just gonna run my finger around that edge there to make a nice tight seal. We have three quarts of simmering water in here. I'm just gonna drop these in okay. here. And the water should come about halfway up the sides of the cans when you have both of them in there. We want to maintain a nice gentle simmer here. We're going to bake this for two hours, and we want to come back periodically and check the water level to make sure it's not getting too, too low. So if you could put a lid back. Sure. We'll come back in two hours. 
Well, why should you steam bread in a can? It's all about density and moisture. With the cans tightly covered in foil, the moisture won't boil off as it would in a pan in the oven. And this bread is also simmered, so it cooks at a much lower temperature than if it were baked in an oven. So you're gonna lose way less moisture at this lower temperature. And of course, bread in a can is in tight quarters. With the bread packed into a figure-hugging tomato can, there isn't a lot of room for expansion. And that's gonna leave us with a moist, dense bread. Okay, so it's been two hours, and we wanna check our brown bread for doneness. I'm not gonna to try to test it in the pan. There's a lot of hot liquid in there. So I'm just gonna pull one out, test it to see if it's done. If it's not done, we can rewrap it and put it back in. Okay. Now, the best thing to get these out are canning tongs. They have the right round shape. Mm -hmm. They have a nice grip to it, rather than trying to fuss around with regular tongs. Let's peel the foil off here. Oh, check that out. Oh, oh the, the aroma too. Perfect. It's got a couple crumbs right there, mm -hmm. but that's going to be great. It's going to be really nice. So we're going to let these cool for 20 minutes, then we'll come back and take them out of the can. Okay. So they should slide out nice and easily. Perfect. And that 20 minutes was so the bread could firm up enough so that you could do this. Exactly. But you can see it's still steamy. Yes. So we're going to let it sit for another hour, then we can come back and eat it. Very excited about this. So I'm just going to lie it on the side here. Ball. Nice thick slices. Do you want me to pick the raisins out for you? <laughs> Can I offer you some salted butter for this? I would love that. Excellent. Mm, you hit it spot on. It's a quick bread, but it's not a dessert. It still is really savory, but you get that molasses in there. I have to admit the raisins, very, very nice touch. Yeah. yeah. Just a little bit of bittersweet mm -hmm. flavors going on there, yeah. So this easy bread starts with wheat and rye flour, plus a little cornmeal. Stir in buttermilk, butter, molasses, and raisins if you absolutely must, then scoop the batter into two cans. Steam the bread in a few inches of simmering water, slide the loaves out of the cans, cool, and serve with butter. So from our test kitchen to your kitchen, a delicious and fun to make Boston brown bread. You can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season along with our tastings, testings, and selected episodes on our website, americastestkitchen.com. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.